Well, good morning. We are off. The kids are going to do something. I don't know what they're going to do. It's about minus nine. <laughs> I got some bags to make. And then, since how the sun is rocking and rolling already, uh, we're hoping to tackle that barn. So, mother's going to come out and look after the little one. And I think uh, old dad will let you see what. You can see with your eyes what the camera sees. Uh, Dad will be out as well, I assume, at some point. It is Sunday and it is, uh, you know, long family day weekend. So we're not going to get too yeah. stressed out about working ourselves house. to the bone. Yeah, we're going skating tomorrow. Uh, I'm not actually too excited about that since I already skate with you monkeys twice a week. But we will uh, we'll do it anyways. So I wanted to uh, toss out a quick update in regards to the smashed phone situation. So my last video there was talking about how I ran over my phone. Well, I didn't run it over. I dropped it on the highway and the Super V ran it over. Run over nonetheless. Uh, I was pretty frustrated. I thought everything was gone. But as these things linked together and everything and found their clouds or however, however that uh, sorcery works, I got all my contacts back. I got all my emails back. I got the notes and the files and things back. So all I was really missing was a few pictures because Corey had up, uh, backed up most of them after our holiday. So I was missing a few random things like uh, what would pop up on your screen, on your on your tractors and stuff that I would send off to uh, the, the dealer or the service department just to get a, you know, what's going on here. Some stuff like that, some settings and things like that. Those pictures are now gone. And my thread of text messages, that was actually what bothered me the most is that all that was gone. And I, I was kind of disappointed. So yesterday, Buddy had a game early in the morning. Um, and then Emmy actually had a girls event, girls hockey event. So it was like a lunch and uh, chat with the U18 team. And, uh, you know, trying to trying to build up that girls hockey, which I mean, I think is just awesome. So while they were gone anyways, uh, Livy, she stayed with us. Uh, so me and Buddy, we were playing hockey downstairs and everything like that. And I left my phone sitting beside my iPad. And when I came upstairs, boom, all of my text messages all the way back to June were on there, which is, I mean, just like pages and pages and pages of text messages. So I was like on cloud nine. Like I could not be happier that that happened. So I got all that stuff back. So at the end of the day with my broken phone, all I lost was a few pictures. So that excitement even trumped the uh frustrations of of that so this wheel seal i did over the summer it's kind of a big job right so i wasn't excited to see it already leaking again so now we have this front right wheel leaking this back left wheel is leaking a little bit and this one ram right there is leaking a little bit but excuse me all in all everything is working pretty good this was the uh, situation with the truck. This dash has one of those integrated printed circuits or whatever they call it at the back that's like that paper. So all of these gauges and things go into a little clippy thing. I'll just see if I can find one here. I don't know what these things are called. Hold on a sec. So if you're uh, mechanically inclined, inclined at all uh, or a little bit of a handy-ish person, you work on vehicles and dash clusters and things, these are very common, I think, through the 80s. Our 2394 tractor has them. Our backhoe has them. Our, I think all of our grain trucks have them. They're, uh, they go in this way through the back of the dash. And then these two points are what makes the contact in that printed circuit. And then those pins, or uh, not pins, the 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 bolts or whatever electric screws that stick out the back of the gauges go into here and then they make that contact so i had bought some extra ones of these because they had on our back one stuff they had corroded off and i had actually from i forget the name of the company but i had uh i bought a little baggie of these because they're like a buck a piece and uh, I thought that was going to solve all my all my dash problems across all my machines, which it didn't. So now I have a little baggie of those. But uh, there was a place in the States where you can actually order up that printed circuit. So when I pulled this dash out and I looked at the back, you can see the way, you know, I think it must be copper in there or whatever, runs and where, and where it runs to. 
So where the, the, the power supply copper piece runs from here to here to here, and then the negative runs from here to here to somewhere. But the sender one, you can see that it goes just to this gauge and stops. And we could actually see in that printed circuit, because it's see-through, that that copper had blown up or whatever. It was it was gone. So we pulled that little pin, that or that little clamp that I just showed. I, we pulled it out of the dash, and we just ran a wire directly to that post. And now, you can see, when I flicked it on and gave it power, it dropped right off to cool. And when we had the truck running yesterday, it heated up to about 170. And I think that thermostat was set to 170, 180. So we're calling it a win. We're going to take this. Uh, Dad was going to install this one. This is just a, like an you know, accessory remote coolant gauge. We're going to take that out and uh, leave it on the shelf, I guess. Might put it in here because this coolant sensor gauge works intermittently. And I have a feeling one of the problems could be when I was researching coolant senders, you're not supposed to put Teflon tape on there because that's how it grounds out, right? Because it's only a single wire. So I might, I can see that whoever took this apart put Teflon tape there. Not knocking them, I would have done it too had I not read that on the internet. Oh, but I think that could be, uh, that could be a problem, right? That could be one of the problems why I'm only having intermittent success with that. Of course, we check the oil and the coolant and stuff in it every day. And an engine like this, where I'm getting in and out so many times a day, you would see if it was overheating. So not too concerned about it. But it is nice when things work. So first things first, I'm going to make a couple of bags. Uh, like I said, I'm feeling pretty good. I got all my text messages back. Everybody's healthy for once. We're on like a two-week stretch here of being healthy. Nobody's sick. Nobody's coughing. Nobody's puking. Nobody's dying. Mom and dad are doing well. Everybody's, uh, everything's good. So we'll make up some bags and we'll see if it warms up enough to go and put some tin on that barn. <clears throat> see, that has to be documented too. And I'm pretty sure it's just because I was talking about it. I fired this up and look at that. The temperature gauge is working right off the bat. Now I expect at some point today it's gonna go bam, full, full red. And then it'll have a little blinking light up here. But then that's, you know, throughout the day it works on and off. This morning already it's working, so maybe it thought if it didn't work it was going to get dissected a little bit. I think around here machines know that uh, they would rather be working than being uh, operated on, which I am a big fan of that. So hopefully, hopefully it fixed itself and we don't have to. Ah, okay, well, we've, uh, we've quieted down on the, on the feed side for the day. We picked up some noise on the molasses side. <clears throat> this little pump here, for anybody that watches this and wonders about molasses or anything like that, that's a, a PTO driven pump. It's supposed to go on a sprayer. We, uh, wow, that quad is really smoking. I think she's on her last leg. Look at that. Anyways, it was sitting around here. I'm not sure. We never had a sprayer that took that kind of a pump, so I don't actually know where it come from. But uh, I rigged it up on this electric motor originally to fill, well, to fill totes, and it was just way too slow. But now to fill barrels or to treat my own bales when I bring them down here, it's a little more manageable than this two-inch hose and a two-inch pump, which also works good for filling totes and things. But I always got to thinking if a guy wanted to use molasses in his operation and he was going to treat, you know, several hundred bales throughout the winter, it would be wor worthwhile getting a little pump like that. They're fairly cheap. Uh, you could tie right into your tote with a cam lock or whatever. And there you go. You could use a PTO of your tractor to pump that molasses out. Oh, well, good afternoon. So it's two o'clock. We are breaking for lunch. I'm pretty, uh, Pretty pumped with the amount of work we got done on the barn so far. We are in no way carpenters. We're not. Uh, we're not mechanics. We're not uh, builders. We're not really not even handy men or handy people, right? We're uh, just farmers. So I'm pretty pumped at how that all turned out. <laughs> we got the front done. We got the south side done. The north side was the Hollywood side that we had finished. Originally, so all we got left is the sow side. That's going to be a little bit tricky because there's some doors, you know, bifold, or not bifold, uh, swing out doors. We got to cut 
they tend to fit those doors uh, and then that'll be that'll be that we're gonna have that barn salvaged from the uh, the elements if you will so between the the cows pushing on it and rubbing on it and the horses eating the plywood and uh, the weather beating away at it being all exposed it was probably on its uh, on its last few legs so it either needed to be salvaged tinned or it needed to be ripped down and uh, now we've got a pretty decent pretty decent little barn out of it Well, we've, uh, what time is it? It's four o'clock. We did break for lunch. Then I had a load of bag and so on and so forth. But we did make it back. That north side is done. This front side is done. It's so funny when you see these old buildings. So lots of times, like they're actually, it's incredible how long they stand for being, you know, rough lumber and everything. But they're, they only ever appear to be straight. So you see this top line of screws and then it kind of had to go up. But uh, anyways, it, we did get it. We do try to keep the screws lined up a little bit, but uh, didn't spend that much time with it. And then here we chipped away at the dirt, but you can see there was a bit of a bit of a step there yet. And then uh, this side is done. There was windows cut out, but we just went over them and we'll cut the windows out <coughs> when we do decide to install windows. Almost these screws here look like they almost trend down, but that's because the way it is and then those ones are missing there because that's what the window was it would screw into nothing anyways we got to the back side and kaboom ran out of tin so i guess the tin man didn't order enough tin and uh that'll be me you can even see so these are perfectly level but you can see they're coming down so the building wasn't uh i guess it wasn't 100 percent straight and when you look that it's built with you know round posts not square posts and stuff, you can assume <laughs> that it's it's pretty good, but it's not 100%. So we, uh, Corey and I, actually, even before we were married, well, we might have been married, I don't know, but we were living in town anyways. This was all panels, or all corrals, all of it. They used to, I think they had like a few hundred head of, uh, of cedars here. So there was like cross fences and corrals and all sorts of stuff up here. Gates, that's why these gates, they just go to nowhere. Where's that gate? I don't know, somewhere over there, you can see it. Because it used to be just solid, solid, rough cut, untreated lumber. Water way up there, water here. This one I dug in the ground for the pigs. And then uh, more water as you go down. That all down there was just solid corrals. It was it was crazy. There was a loading chute here. There was a feed shed here, like a chop bin. There was uh, over there, there was the squeeze and, and everything. That's what those bigger posts are for. But we ripped all that out. And uh, the snow load on this lean-to over here caused the roof to fall in 15 years ago. So we, we, we were cleaning that up. We didn't have a way to move it before we had the backhoe so we just kind of threw it all in there so the wind wouldn't blow the tin and stuff away cleaned up all the wood burnt it <clears throat> burnt that uh chop bin that was here and then we we didn't know what to do with the with those that lean to over there that lean to over there or this barn and we did want it to salvage some of this stuff uh that way when you know we buy those aerial photos every year every few years we didn't want it to be a completely changed farm from what it was you know 40 years ago or whenever they got that first picture so we uh, we decided that tinning was going to be the best the best option for at least these two lean-tos in this barn everything else was kind of too far and i don't think we're going to ever tin this but we will most likely we're going to put a roof back on it then it can be a little bit of windbreak or some hay storage or something that old feeder that was in the bush we skidded it out for the pigs it's basically well, it's it's just there's nothing left of it, but it does it does hold grain for the pigs, anyways, and then you don't have to worry about them chewing it apart when it's gone. It's gone. So she is actually over there right now with tape measure. We're gonna measure up the tin for these lean-tos. We'll do this side, the back side, and that other side, and then same on this one. I don't know if we'll ever get around to tinning these 
to grain bins. We salvaged these one off of a property a mile south and east, and then one off of a property two miles west, three miles west, I guess. They, they were the only ones that had tin roofs. Oh no, sorry, that one didn't have a tin roof. That was uh, actually back, way back in the start of my YouTube channel. That was one of the videos that I was doing where we were peeling the shingles off and tinning the roof. But those are uh, those are the chicken coops now. The one here is just big and open. Uh, she calls it her summer coop. That's where we put the turkeys and and set up a bit of a brooder in there. And then the one over there, I guess, that actually has a loft and steps and everything. And it's only partially a chicken coop, uh, and it's all well insulated and everything. So uh, that's where they live in the winter. But I'm going to go and uh, I'm going to go and help Corey out. She's over there trying to measure up. And then I think that's going to be it for the videoing today. I hope that everybody enjoys their family day weekend, and uh, we will see you all next week.